Hello. In this video, I want you to show my RF signal generator. I made it a while ago, and it's a bit similar to the one Mr. Scott M. Baker built in 2015. And it's based on the schematics in the magazine nuts and volts from June 2014. I will put the links of this generator in the description below. So I wanted to make a similar RF generator, but with components I still had in my workplace. I wanted to avoid the rather special components as described in the Nuts and Volts magazine. The generator is partly based on the schematics from the Nuts and Volts magazine, but I also used other schematics and I built it in the ugly style or dead bug style, also called Manhattan style. I can show you the different components. This is at the heart of the generator. An MC 1648. Uh, it's the same as uh, used in the Nuts and Vols magazine. Switch with two vectors. Here we have the 12 position rotary switch with the different coils to choose the different frequency bands. That's the amplifier. Here we have the six switches, there is the output and here we have the frequency module I bought on eBay for about ten dollars. Uh, so far I use a power supply of 12 to 13 volts to, to run it. Going through the controls on the front, here we have the 12 position selector switch. It allows me to select 12 different bands. The lowest band begins at approximately 150 kHz. The highest band ends at 150 MHz. With this knob, I can vary the frequency to get the desired value in the chosen band. I used a 10 turn potential meter to obtain a fine tuning. So the first band, the second, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. So we get to the maximum frequency at about 150 MHz. These six switches work as an attenuator. From the left to the right we have minus 1 dB, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and 2 times minus 10 dB. With all the possible combination of these switches, I can weaken the signal from minus 1 dB to minus 30 dB in steps of 1 dB. For instance, minus 4 dB, minus 5, minus 7, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30 dB. Here is of course the output of the sine wave generator. It has an impedance of 50 ohms. As I said before, instead of buying new components, I wanted to use components I already had in my component box. I didn't find a varactor, or as we say here, a varicap that was able to cover the whole band from 150 kHz to 150 MHz without the loss of 
the sine wave at the upper and lower bands. I only had a BB112 and a BB509 varactor. So as you can see, I mounted a switch here and I used these two varactors to obtain the right frequency in the specified band. To the left, I choose the BB112 and to the right, I use the BB509. So in the first three positions of the 12 position selector switch, the BB112 is used in the other nine positions, the BB509. In the magazine nuts and volts, they show how to use various fixed resistors that are switched in as the frequency bands are switched to obtain a leveled amplitude output over the whole frequency range from 150 kilohertz to 150 megahertz. I did do that, but I used this AGC automatic gain control function to vary the amplitude in, let's say, a more continuous way, so that together with the DB switches, I can choose any value that I want. The maximum amplitude of the signal varies from, let's say, about 3 volts in the lower band, as you can see now, to a maximum of 5 volts at about 26 megahertz. To the lowest value at the highest frequency, about 500 millivolts. Until now, I didn't install an option to be able to modulate the sine wave, but I intend to do it later. Maybe the frequency of this sine wave generator isn't the most stable, but it's okay for my purposes. So, uh, that was a quick review. I think there's still uh, some work to complete it. Uh, once finished, I may post another video of it. That's all for now, so bye.